Good morning, guys. Welcome, up, welcome back to our channel. So our virtual class, which is all about urinary and bowel elimination. So let's start. So we need to define different terms for us to understand this topic fully. So let's start with the definition of urination, maturation, and voiding. These three terms uh, means the same. It means the process of emptying urine from the bladder. So always remember, guys, that, that uh, a normal person uh, will have a 1,500 ml of urine for 24 hours. And if your patient is having a urinary catheter and you need to monitor every one hour, the patient or the person should have 30 ml of urine per hour, okay? So if your patient is having in an order of strict INO, so you need to get 30 ml of urine per hour. And your urine should be yellow in color. Then it has no uh, distinct odor or foul odor, and it should be, the consist consistency should be clear, not cloudy or bloody. So if you found out that there is an abnormality to patient's uh, urine, you should report it immediately to the nurse because maybe the patient is having infection, the patient is having bleeding, and so on. So what are the rules for normal urination? So, Let's enumerate this. First is you need to practice a medical asepsis. What do you mean by medical asepsis? Medical asepsis is you need to wear gloves or any other PPEs so to protect yourself and to protect the patient. Follow standard precaution and the bloodborne pathogen standard. Always remember if you're touching any body fluids, uh, fluid like urine, it should be considered as infectious, even the patient has no infection or has no H, uh, hepatitis or uh, HIV, you need to consider it as infectious. Provide fluids as, as the nurse and care plan direct. Okay, what is the importance of fluids? Fluids will flush out the, will flush out the infection, will flush out the toxic, toxic waste in our body and it will hydrate the patient. So follow the person's voiding routines and habits. Check with the nurse and the care plan. If your patient used to uh, always void in the morning, there are some patients who wants to void before bedtime, so you should always follow that. Then help the person to the bathroom when the patient requests. Some patients cannot pass urine in the urinal, so you need to assist them in the bathroom. Uh, if the patient uh, is... Uh, has deformity in the legs, you need to use the commode chair. So there are different types of routines the patient is having. So you need to follow that. Help the person assume a normal position for voiding if possible. Okay. Some women sit or squat and men stand. Warm the bedpan or urinal. In the hospital, we have washer. Okay. After the patient urinate, you need to clean the bedpan and urinal in the washer. Or if there's no washer, you need to disinfect it. Or the uh, nursing, uh, what's this? The, some institution, they will allow their cleaner uh, to disinfect this bedpan and urinal. Cover the person for warmth and privacy. There are some person who cannot pass urine or cannot urinate if there's uh, someone looking uh, on them. So always provide privacy. Next, tell the person that running water, flushing the toilet, or playing music can mask voiding. And stay nearby if the person is weak or unsteady. If your patient have weakness and want to stand to urinate, you need to be with them. Place the signal light and toilet tissue within the reach. Allow enough time. Do not rush the person, especially if the person had uh, an operation 
which uh, they use spinal anesthesia, it's very difficult for, for the patient to avoid. So you need to wait and do not rush the person because it's very difficult for them because their bladder is being affected by the anesthesia. Next is promote relaxation. Some people like to read, run water in a sink if the person cannot start or steam. Okay, some studies, they found out that if you uh, open uh, the faucet and run water, okay, this will help the person to urinate. Then provide perennial care as needed. If your patient is incontinent, what do you mean by incontinent? Incontinent uh, cannot control his urination. So you need to provide a regular perennial care for the patient to prevent infection and to prevent any other skin problems. Assist with hand washing after voiding. It's a basic uh, infection control. Then another rule is assist the person to the bathroom or offer the bedpan, urinal, or commode at regular times. Some people are embarrassed or too weak to ask for help. Some people, they are awkward. They feel awkward. They, are, uh, they feel ashamed if they are asking for bottles. So you should uh, have this. You should anticipate and you should always offer help. So let us match the different uh medical terms to the definition on the right side so let's start with the need to void at once so on the left let us choose what is the medical term for the need to void at once so your options are dysuria hematuria nocturia oliguria polyuria urinary frequency, urinary incontinence, urinary retention, and urinary urgency. So what's the answer? So the answer is urinary urgency. The inability to void. So what do you mean by inability to void? So that is urinary retention. Okay. It means that you cannot void maybe there are some problems like spinal cord injury, there are some spinal uh, anesthesia that is being uh, injected to the patient. Next one is the involuntary loss or leakage of urine. That is called urinary incontinence. So you don't have any control of this because you have any you have medical problem like spinal cord injury or other uh, illnesses. Then you have voiding at frequent interval. So voiding at frequent interval. So the frequent is there. So that is urinary frequency. Abnormally large amounts of urine. So that the answer is there. Poly means many and urea is urine. So that the answer is polyuria. Then scant amount of urine less than 500 ml in 24 hours. So less than 500, our normal for 24 hours is 1,500. So you should choose oliguria. Next, frequent urination at night, okay? So the answer is nocturia. Then blood in the urine. So blood means hema, so it will be hematuria and finally you have painful or difficult urination so the keyword for diff, uh, for this is difficult so it will start with d so d plus d dysuria so these are some urinary elimination problems that you need to take note next is Catheters. So catheters in the hospital, you will see a lot of patients with catheters, especially when they are monitoring for intake and output, when they want to see the urine, the consistency, the color of the urine. So what is catheters? Catheters is a tube used to drain or inject fluid through a body opening, used to drain. So if you want, you want to drain a urine because the patient is, uh, what do you mean by this? has urinary retention, so we are using catheter. 
you need to inject fluid. If you want to flush the bladder because there is bleeding, you need a catheter. So what is catheterization? That is the process of inserting catheter. So catheters are all used for mainly for collection of urine specimen, okay? If the patient cannot pass or has urinary retention, you need to put a catheter so you can collect a urine specimen. How you will do that? Don't collect on the urinary bag. You collect always on the catheter itself, okay? At the end of the catheter, you remove the bag and then you collect on the catheter. Then, Measure the amount of urine left in the bladder after the person void. So you, you're uh, measuring the urine in the bladder after person voids. Next, we have different types of catheters we can see in the hospital. We are seeing in, we, we will uh, encounter in the hospital. First is the straight catheter. If we're talking about straight catheter, guys, it drains the bladder and then remove immediately. When we're talking about straight catheter, okay, it is not a permanent one. It is intermittent. What do you mean by intermittent? It means that you will remove it immediately after you, you, uh, you insert it. So usually it is all, only temporary. For example, it is used for those patients who receive spinal anesthesia and has urinary retention. So the patient will tell, I have pain in my suprapubic area. What's your suprapubic area? On the lower abdomen, okay, where your bladder is. So he will tell you, I have pain in my uh, lower abdomen. And you will find out that he has bladder distension, okay? It's hard to touch. And you will see that it's... Uh, it's tender. So the order will tell you to insert a straight catheter. But as nursing assistant, you're not the one who's inserting the catheter. But the nurse will tell you, please get me a straight catheter. So what you will get, a straight catheter will look like this. The uh, straight one is on the upper left side of your monitor the red one. So next, when we're talking about indwelling Foley catheter, this is the most uh, typical type of catheter you will see in the hospital. So it is also called as retention or Foley catheter. It is left usually in the bladder, okay? Usually it will leave, uh, leave there uh, for a long time. So it is used to measure a urine output Okay, for those patients, especially those patients who is uh, will uh, have who needs to be monitored, and if you want, if the doctor wants to see the consistency of urine, uh, he needs to put Foley catheter. The third one is the suprapubic catheter. Suprapubic catheter is a type of indwelling catheter, but the difference is the indwelling the the suprapubic catheter is you need to make an incision on the suprapubic area of the patient, okay? You need an operation on the suprapubic area of the patient and you will put the catheter there, not in the penis or not in the, not in the urethra. But you need to put just below the abdomen and it will be sutured. And the patient will void from there, okay? It's inserted in the bladder through a surgical incision. So last one is the condom catheter. So condom catheter, as the name implies, it's like a condom, okay? It's applied externally, not put inside the urethra, but only externally. As if you know how condom, cat condom is, uh, is applied, so this is also how condom catheter is uh, applied in a patient's pe penis. So what you will do is you'll put the condom catheter and then you'll co connect the urinary drainage bag. So it is used normally for those patients who has uh, urinary incontinence. So they will not wet their perineal area always because they cannot control their bladder. So they are putting condom catheter. But there are some 
uh, disadvantage of using this one because it will be easily removed if because it's always uh, wet so it will be easily removed not of all of it has a good quality because it is easily to be removed so the right upper one this is called the foley catheter the left lower one okay the picture on the left lower uh, part is the condom catheter and the suprapubic catheter is this one okay the one with suprapubic so they are making an incision on the suprapubic area and then they will put the catheter so these are the types of catheter so what are the guidelines if we're handling patients with urinary catheter as nursing assistant your main responsibility during catheterization or for urinary catheter is uh, catheter care, okay, which we already discussed and uh, we already have the uh, return demonstration for it. So also your another responsibility is to drain urine using the urinary catheter. So first, let us uh, see what are the guidelines in carrying urinary catheters. First is follow the rules of medical asepsis. Follow the rules of medical asepsis. Follow standard precautions and bloodborne pathogen standards. Allow urine to flow freely. Make sure that it is not kink, okay? So that the urine will flow freely. The patient might feel, might feel pain, okay, if it's kink because the urine is being stuck in the tube. So you need to make sure that it's flowing freely. Keep the catheter connected to the drainage tubing. Keep the drainage tube below the bladder. So it will not be flowing backward to the bladder and will cause infection. Move the bag to the other side of the bed when the person is turned and repositioned. If your patient is bedridden and has urinary catheter, make sure that if you turn the patient on his left, you will uh, also uh, move the bag on the side on the left side attach the drainage bag to the bed frame not on the side rails okay because if you're moving the side rail maybe you might pull the drainage bag or the urinary catheter bag do not let the drainage bag rest on the floor because what will happen it will be a cause of ascending infection and next is coil the drainage tubing on the bed. Secure it to the bottom linen, follow agency policy, okay? So how you are securing the poly catheter? As I've told you, man, you should secure it. For male, you should secure it on the lower abdomen, while in female, you should secure it on the thigh. But as I've told you also that we have a commercial catheter straps that we are putting even if it's for female or male we we are putting the strap on the thigh secure the catheter to the inner thigh i told you this one check for the leaks so there are some instances that the catheter will be uh will be having leaks because maybe it stays longer in the patient for uh to the patient so what will happen it will be leaking so make sure that you observe for leaks so you can change it immediately. Then provide catheter care according to the care plan. Okay, So catheter care should be done daily, twice a day, or after bowel movements, or when vaginal discharge is present. Next is provide perineum. I, I already told this. Empty the drainage bag at the end of the shift. Usually you have eight or 12 hour shift. At the end of the shift, you should empty the drainage bag. Measure and record the amount of urine. How you will measure it, I'll, I'll teach you, I'll demonstrate how to, record, how to measure and record the amount of urine. Use a separate measuring container for each person, of course, to prevent cross contamination or cross infection. Make sure that when you're measuring a urine, you should place the calibrated container or glass in a flat surface 
and make sure that it is in your eye level. Do not let the drain in the, on the drainage bag touch any surfaces. Encourage flu, fluid intake as directed by the nurse and if it's not contraindicated with the patient. Because some patients, they are fluid restriction, like patients with chronic kidney disease. Report complaints to the nurse at once, pain, burning, the need to void or irritation, and always check for color, clarity, and odor of the urine and presence of particles or blood. So observe for signs and symptoms of UTI like fever, chills, flank pain, or tenderness. Where's your flank? Flank is located on the lower back. Change in urine, uh, blood, foul smell, particles, cloudiness, and oliguria. Change in mental or functional status, confusion, decreased appetite, falls, decreased activity, tiredness, and so on. And always check for urine leakage around the catheter. So catheter care, we already did it. Emptying, so I'll, I'll demonstrate this one where we will be having hands-on on, emptying urinary drainage bag, removing an indwelling Foley catheter, application of the condom catheter, and bladder training. Okay, what is bladder training? Bladder training, it is a technique to make sure that the patient will return to its normal uh, urinary functioning. What do you mean by that? So if your patient is having catheter for a long time, what will happen? he or she will be dependent on that catheter. And if you remove the catheter, he will not be able to, to urinate by himself. So bladder training is what you will do. You tell the patient and you explain to the patient that you need, if you have urge to void, okay? At first, you clamp the catheter, catheter tubing, and you tell the patient that if you have urge to void, just call me or the nurse. Okay, so you need to have three times urge before we will remove the catheter. In that way, the patient can urinate by himself. Next, bowel elimination. So our normal bowel elimination or, uh, or bowel functioning, okay, first is, let's define some terms. First is peristalsis. So peristalsis, it, peristalsis, it is an alternating contraction and relaxation of your intestinal muscles, okay? So not only your heart is contracting and relaxing, but also your... Uh, intestinal muscles or your gastrointestinal tract. Without this movement, you cannot pass the uh, stool. Without this movement, you cannot uh, you cannot absorb the nutrients that you're getting from the food. Next is feces. Uh, what is the difference between feces and stool? So feces refers to a semi-solid mass of waste products in the colon that are expelled through the anus, okay? While stool, it refers to the excreted feces. Defecation means bowel movement, okay? In me medically speaking, if they told you, I want to defecate, it means that they want to pass stools. It's the process of excreting feces from the rectum through the anus. So we have different factors affecting bowel elimination. We have the privacy, the habits, the diet, the fluid, the activity, drugs, disability, and aging. So some patients, they cannot defecate if uh, they are being uh, observed by someone. Okay, so you need to provide privacy. Habits. Habit, there are some person who, will, who want to defecate in the morning, okay, early in the morning. So you need to respect that. Diet, if you're not taking enough fluid or water or you're not taking a high-fiber high diet, so it will be difficult for you to have a bowel elimination. Then 
activity, if you're not moving, if you're not always, if you're bed dressed, if you're bedridden, okay, most of these patients have problem in their bowel elimination, like they are having impaction or they are having constipation. Next is drugs. Some drugs, they affect in the bowel elimination. They can affect in a way that they made a, your stool hard or they can, uh, there are some side effects like diarrhea, disability. Uh, is it like if you have problems with your body, like you are bedridden, if you have fractures. So this is disability, it will affect your bowel elimination. Next is aging. Most of the age person, okay, age person or older person, they have they have decreased peristalsis. So if you have decreased peris peristalsis, it will affect your bowel elimination. That's why most of them has constipation or bowel impaction. So let's define some terms again, like what we did in the urinary problems. So first, it is a prolonged retention and buildup of feces in the rectum. So what's the answer? It should be constipation, fecal impaction, diarrhea, fecal incontinence, and flatulence. So the answer is fecal impaction. It is a frequent passage of liquid stools. So frequent passage of liquid stools. The answer is diarrhea. It is an inability to control the passage of feces and gas. So what's inability to control the passage of feces and gas? So you cannot control also. That is called fecal incontinence. It's a passage of hard, dry stools. So the answer is constipation. And last one is the excessive formation of gas or air in the stomach and intestine. So that is flatulence or flatus. Next, let's go with bowel training. So we have bladder training. We also have blood bowel training done to gain control of bowel movements and to develop a regular pattern of elimination. During bowel training, we are having this exercise like Kegels exercise and other bowel exercise so we can regain our normal pattern of elimination. Next is enemas. Okay, we will see a lot of patients, especially those patients with problem with their gastrointestinal tract of having enemas. Okay, what is enemas? Enemas is the introduction of fluid into the rectum and lower colon. Okay, some people or some person they are calling enemas as labatiba. Okay, so this is the introduction of fluid into the rectum and lower colon. So, what's the purposes of enemas? So, first is to remove the feces. So, if your patient is having impaction or fecal impaction or constipation. So you want to remove this because the patient is having discomfort. So you need to use an enemas. So you will apply in the rectum, you will insert a tube, okay, containing fluids so the patient can pass. You need to position the patient on his left, always on his left. So it will be effective, okay, because of the anatomy of the patient. Anatomy, anatomical, uh, anatomy of the uh, gastrointestinal tract. It will be more effective if you uh, place the patient on his left side, okay? The position can be a left seams position or left lateral position. But most of the time, they are using the seams position. So to relieve constipation also, another purpose is fecal impaction or flatulence, to clean the bowel or feces before certain surgeries and diagnostic procedure. So if you are having a medical, like you want to check for your colon, so colonoscopy, okay, like sigmoidoscopy, and you have any operations relating with gastrointestinal tract, 
the doctor will order enema so it, it will clean your gastrointestinal tract and it will not uh, contaminate the operate op operation site operative site we have different types of enemas we have the tap water enema we have the saline enema we have the soap suds enema we have the small volume enema so you will see there that that is the uh, content of different types of enema so for tap water it is obtained from the faucet so tap water that's why it's tap water enema we have also saline enema a solution of salt and water so for adults add one to teaspoon of table salt to 500 to 100 ml of tap water we have also a soap suds enema this is used in the olden days okay they are using a castile soap to 500 to 1000 ml of tap water and we have also a small volume so this is only 120 ml solution for adult and 60 ml solution for the child so it is commercially prepared okay ready to use so i'll teach you how to do this small volume enema we have also oil retention enema has minerals olive or cottonseed oil the adult size contains about 120 ml of solutions children receive 60 ml the commercially prepared enema is ready to use and lastly the hypertonic solutions it is infused into a bowel exert osmotic pressure that pulls fluid out of interstitial spaces it is contraindicated for patients who are dehydrated and young infants because it is hypertonic solutions so this is usually on your left this is soap suds enema okay so in this container on your left in this in this container the silver one they'll put a solution okay and this is the tube okay the white one the end one this will be inserted on the patient's anus so this on the left it should be 18 inches high so it will flow freely and you should keep the tube okay 15 minutes for 15 minutes only okay and after that the patient will defecate i think this is one to two inches long when you insert then you have the fleet enema or the commercially used enema the uh the small volume enema okay we are calling also this one as fleet enema this is now uh the popular enema, enema type that we are using in the hospital because it's uh commercially made already ready to use already so this one you'll just place the patient on the left seams position and you will just insert it so i'll teach you how to administer enema on friday next rectal suppositories okay Bef uh, before before enema okay if patient can defecate with rectal suppositories they tried first for for rectal suppositories so it is a cone-shaped solid drug that is inserted into a body opening okay so what are the purposes of rectal suppositories it should be for constipation fecal impaction and bowel training so this is the steps how to insert the rectal suppositories so it's like a drug okay you moisten the suppository with water or if you have lubricating jelly so uh, the patient will not have discomfort on the insertion then lie on the left side okay bend the right knee so it should be the uh, left lateral or left seams position and you insert it and keep it for five minutes next is caring so we finish enemas let's go to ostomies okay ostomy it is a surgically created opening for the elimination of body waste if the patient has terminal cancer and he cannot pass 
in his rectum, they will cut the part of the intestines where there is a cancer or they will remove the rectum itself if that part of the body with cancer. So they will create an artificially made rectum, which is in the abdomen, which is called the ostomy. Okay? So stoma, it is, the one, it is the opening seen through the abdominal wall. Okay? We have different type of ostomy. We have the colostomy, colostomy and we have the ileostomy. So colostomy, it is a surgically created opening in the colon. That's why colostomy. While ileostomy, it is created in the ilium. Okay, in the ilium, this is part of your small intestine. So this is how they made the stoma or the ostomy. Okay, so if you have problem, they will just cut that problem or cancer or any tumor. They'll just cut it and then they will make the part visible outside and this will be your rectum. Next, how you are taking care of ostomies? Okay, if you're assigned for patients, especially if you will be recruited as a private nurse or if you will be recruited as home care nurse, okay, there are some patients that they are having ostomy. So what is the nursing care for ostomies? Okay, you need to change the pouch. Okay, especially if it's two third full, okay, or uh, sorry, one third full, you need to change the bag or to drain the bag if it's one third full, okay, and you change the bag itself every three to seven days. I'll repeat, you need to change the bag every three to seven days to prevent infection. And you need to drain the bag when it's, it is one-third full. So it will not burst. Okay. And to prevent foul-smelling uh, uh, foul smelling and uh, flatulence uh, to your patient with ostomies, because if you are taking cabbage okay those gas forming food or vegetables like cabbage uh, what is, cabbage potato these are the food that is gas forming so you, you instruct the patient to decrease the intake of this food so to prevent flatulence and so that's your uh, instruction and you need to clean it okay what uh, what we are using in cleaning this one we are not using any disinfectant because it will be irritate, irritate the stoma okay we are using only like uh, warm water okay just to clean the stoma so i'll teach you how to do this changing ostomy pouches Next is assisting with elimination, okay? Assisting with elimination. Uh, I actually, I, I uh, told you about this. We have different elimination equipments. We have the bedside commode. It is a chair frame with a toilet seat and a removable collection bucket used for person who is weak and unsteady. We have bedpan also, okay? It is used for female if they want to urinate and if they, they want to defecate for uh, it is used also for male who wants to defecate urinal it is used for male patient when they want to urinate or to void so this one the left side okay upper and upper and lower left side this this is called commode chair Okay, some commode chair, they have wheels. Okay, so you can bring the patient in the washroom. Others, you can stay in your, it's like a chair. You can stay it next to the patient's bed. We have also in the middle, we have the bedpan on, and on the right, it is the urinal. 
So guidelines for assisting with the elimination. We should always honor the person's request for assistance, okay? And always provide the person with privacy. If you leave the person alone, always make sure that the call light control is within easy reach. Okay, then make sure the toilet paper is within easy reach also. Be sure to provide good perineal care as necessary to prevent skin problems. Provide the person with a chance to wash his hands, okay, for infection control purposes. Then always wear gloves because you are holding a body fluids or stool. So you need to wear gloves or mask or the appropriate PPE. Then before disposing the waste, observe the feces or urine for amount or any unusual characteristic like blood, like cloudiness, or like it's what, what's the, <coughs> sorry. Uh, is it oligoric? Okay, or any other unusual characteristics. Never place the bedpan or urinal on an overhead, over bed table because it will not be a ple with, it's not pleasant for the patient. So you need to remove it immediately if the patient is finished. You need to remove it immediately. If there are others in the room as a result of elimination, always ask the cleaner to uh, spray for an air freshener. Disinfect equipment used for elimination carefully as what the hospital or healthcare uh, environment requires or what's the policy of the hospital. We have different ways of collecting urine, guys. We have the routine urine specimen. This is collected by having the person void directly into the specimen container or by pouring in a urine from a urinal, bedpan, portable, commode collection container or urine drainage bag. We have also a clean catch urine specimen. This is the more, uh, more uh, you will collect a urine which is more uh, what do you mean by this? Not contaminated, okay? Not contaminated because what you will do is you tell the patient that he should voice void, okay? The start of his uh, urine, he should, he should void that. Then control and then the middle of the urine, you should put on the urine container. So it's almost the same midstream catch. And we have also 24 hour urine collection. Usually we are using the 24 hour urine collection if we want to check for any urine, uh, any kidney stones, okay? Because if you're urinating, you need to monitor for 24 hours if there is a presence of stones. So you need to collect for 24 hours. So. How you will do this? To collect a 24-hour urine specimen, have the person empty his bladder first. So that time, you need to discard that urine. And the next urine after that, you will put it in a bottle, okay? And you will keep it in a bottle and put that bottle on the uh, ice, okay? Put it on the ice. And if the patient urinate again, you need to put it again on the ice so it will not uh, spoil. Then, for example, uh, the first urine is the, the first the time where you discarded the first urine is 8 a.m. Then the next time the patient voided is 9 a.m. So you will end collecting the urine at 9 a.m the next day. We have different ways in collecting urine, okay? So uh, urinalysis, it is the examination of the urine under a microscope and by chemical means. It is commonly used diagnostic tool in the healthcare setting. So this ends our topic in our urinary and bowel elimination. If you have any question, just feel free to ask in our uh, WhatsApp group.
Okay, if you have any doubt, if you have any confusion, just ask me in our WhatsApp group. Okay, thank you.